Praise the Lord, precious saints, and welcome to another daily prophetic message to start your day. And thank you for all those that have joined in the three-day fasting from the weekend. You would have also noticed that yesterday's upload that I uploaded to YouTube, unfortunately, received a community strike. So I will no longer be able to upload anything for one week on the YouTube channel. So for those that have access to Facebook, uh, this is where you'll be able to hear today's message. Precious saints, we are seeing the signs that are before us that are telling us that the Lord is coming and about to rapture his church. So we need to have our ears open, ready to hear the trumpet of God within this hour. Now, this past night, my wife had a dream, and in that dream, it was a rapture dream, and she was about to be raptured up, but the Lord himself came and put his hands upon her shoulders, stopping her from being raptured. And within that dream, she had a knowing that there was something that the Lord was asking my wife to deal with prior to the rapture. Now, as we were praying together, uh, along with family and also brethren this morning within this ministry, it came to the knowledge as I started to speak this scripture. And I said, according to Hebrews 12, verses 1 in section B, it said, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now, when I started to read this scripture, I wasn't particularly talking about sin because my wife is not in any known sin, but rather there can be things that are weighing us down. They can be the cares of this world. They can be the cares for lost loved ones. They can be the cares of, you know, about our futures and the different cares of this world that come along and they weigh us down precious saints. And as soon as I started to read that, and I started to say cultural ties, cultural ties, sometimes our cultural ties to our families, to our lost loved ones, can actually be a hindrance to us of being ready for that day of rapture. Now, I don't know about you, but I have experienced that feeling of being debt free. When you have that sense of being debt free, it is such a freedom that comes with it. An actual fact is when I sold everything to go and follow the Lord, there also was such a liberty, not only to be debt free, but also to have the restrictions of mortgages and different things and the ties of this world and all the cares of this world that were binding me down. It wasn't until I was released to go into the harvest field that I spent a lot of my earlier years in Africa in different countries preaching the gospel, being faithful to tell the people that the rapture was about to happen. And I went to villages. I went to all sorts of places. I've traveled far, far distances, been on buses for over 48 hours, been on planes for over 48 hours, been traveled on in a car across Australia, which took seven days to get to certain locations, just to preach a message to a small handful of people. So I've I've been to lots of places, traveled on local transport, you name it. I've been to those places to preach and try to reach as many people as possible. And now, obviously, in the days that we live in today, with the communication, with the technology, we are able to reach people far and near because of techn- technology through social media, YouTube, and Facebook and so forth. But unfortunately, due to censorship, there are things that we cannot speak. We cannot speak certain things because of the censorship of truth within this hour, precious saints. So we must be alert to those things. But how fast will the rapture be, you might be saying? Well, according to 1 Corinthians 15 verse 52, it says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the trumpet call, for a trumpet will sound, and the dead who, they they are the who believed in Christ, will be raised first imperishable and will be completely changed, wonderfully 
transformed. And then those who are in Christ shall also be transformed. Precious saints. You know, there are numerous definitions of the twinkling of an eye, which also represents the blinking of an eye. So in a moment, in the twinkling of of an eye. I want us to talk about the rapture and how fast it will be. Not only how fast it is before us and how soon it's going to come, precious saints, but how quick will that moment be when it happens? Well, let's look at this. So, uh, if the Apostle Paul is describing the speed of the rapture as a twinkle, then he's describing something so fast, it's difficult to even comprehend. The twinkling of an eye is the time it takes for light to enter the eye, reach the back of the eye and be reflected back out. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. So the twinkling is about one billionth of a second. The blink is a little bit slower, but still too fast to recognize. A blink lasts somewhat between 300 and 400 milliseconds, as considerably less than half a second. Taking both of these into consideration, the reason why the Apostle Paul used this term was to assure us of the supernatural miracle of the rapture. There is no human effort. It assures us that no one can impede it. No one can slow it down. No one can drag their feet or add anything to it. When it's on, precious saints, it's on and we will go up. In a millisecond it takes to be raptured, we will find ourselves in the presence of the Lord and we will meet in the clouds with the Lord in the air. And let's just say it's a supernatural event that takes place so super fast that we will be caught up together precious saints. I don't know about you, but I'm truly, truly waiting for this day. And it is a joyful thing because the cares of this world and all the burdens and things that have been taken off my shoulder. I also feel so light now that I'm ready to be raptured, ready to be taken at any moment that the Lord comes to take us home, precious saints. So many today will so will say to me that hey you know what pastor we can slow down the events of the end time through prayer yes our prayers are going to slow down the events so that we can do more we can reach more souls we can see revival we can do all these things well i just want to turn to scripture to look at this because according to the bible it says in matthew 24 verses 6 to 8 You will continue to hear of wars and rumours of wars, so that you are not frightened. So those things must take place. But that is not yet the age of the age, for nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. That's right, of the birth pangs. So, Let's look at these birth pangs because many say to me about certain things within their life. So the definition of a birth pang is the pains associated with the process of childbirth. Example of that is contractions. Now, my wife has six children. I've never felt the pain of childbearing because I'm a man and only a woman can ever experience that, in particularly a mother. And I have been there for four of those pregnancies. She's had five because we have one set of twins. And one of those, I was stuck in another country and couldn't get back on time as I was doing missionary work. But I was there for four of those and I saw how the contractions increased right up to the birth of the child. Now, the Lord is talking about these birth pangs. Now, as much as I could say, hey, you know what, Um, Ida, 
you know what, I don't think it's convenient today that you have this child. You know, maybe we should pray and stop the contraction so that we can come back at another time. Or, you know what, it's inconvenient. I don't want this child to come back now. Or maybe even if I had turned around and said, hey, you know what, I still need to get my hair done. I still need to do the shopping. I still need to do things. There's nothing that's going to stop the contractions. They are going to come whether you like it or not. And there are some births that take a longer period of time to others where there was one child with mine that I wasn't present for, that was Faith, and the pregnancy was very fast, precious saints. So there is nothing we can do to stop the contractions. We, there's nothing we can do to stop the birth pangs. When they have started, God is going to bring about His end time events. And I'm believing, I would love to see revival, but the truth is, precious saints, that revival doesn't have to happen in the way that we assume. And I believe the Lord is coming back sooner than we think. So we need to make sure that we are ready for that day because many people will say, hey, you know what, pastor, there are so many prophecies that have been given to me and I haven't seen the fulfillment of those prophecies. Therefore, I don't want the Lord to come back. I don't want the Lord to come back because I want to see the fulfillment of those prophecies. I want to see my ministry grow. I want to see the fulfillment of praying for the sick casting out devils. I want to see many more souls come into the kingdom of God. And the truth is, precious saints, God is not going to wait around to see your personal prophecies to come to pass when we are in that hour where the birth pangs, where the contractions have already started. Those contractions have already started, precious saints. And that delivery is going to take place, whether we like it or not. The rapture will take place, precious saints. But a lot of people will say, well, you know, but I want to see, I didn't get to serve the Lord. There are some people that have been woken up in this later hour and they feel that, oh no, I don't want the Lord to come back because my family is not saved. I haven't warned my family. So you need to utilize this time that you're awakened to go and warn them. If you haven't prayed for your family yet, then you better start praying. But it doesn't mean that God is going to put a halt on the process of the contractions, of that natural birth to come, because it is. that's why we see everything happening around us. There is an increase of evil. There is an increase of deception. There is an increase of the beast system being pushed out so fast that there is nothing we can do to stop it. It's going to happen, precious saints. We need to just be ready for that day. We need to make sure that there is nothing that is weighing us down, that there is no sin in our lives. This is not an hour to be playing with your salvation. This is not an hour to be caught in sin. This is not an hour to be playing games with this rapture because it is no, it is not a game thing to play with, but rather we must be prepared. So what about what happens during this period of time? Maybe you're saying, well, you know, I want to be around because I want to fulfill the call of God in my life. Do you understand that we, what happens is when the rapture happens, that means that there is seven years of tribulation. There are a lot of people that say to me, hey, pastor, I don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. And that's fine. If you desire, and that, I'm saying this, if you desire to be left behind, you might find yourself left behind precious saints you might find yourself left behind i don't know about you but it's getting tough already you see the things that are happening in afghanistan to christians you see the things that are happening down in the severe lockdowns in new south wales of australia you see other countries you see other countries that are enduring certain things with what is taking place with the beast system that has been released and you think you're going to be able to handle that during the seven years tribulation precious saints don't 
even consider it. Let me tell you, those Christians in Afghanistan, there is nothing holding them back from entering into the rapture. Because when you are pushed into such situations like that, there's only one thing you can think of, and that is Jesus Christ that will deliver you from that situation. Now, now those persecuted Christians that are being persecuted today, they will enter into the kingdom of God straight away, precious saints. Let me put, let me, let me tell you that. So we must be ready for whatever is to come before us. But most importantly, we must be ready for that day of rapture, that there is nothing holding us down. There's nothing going to stop us. Our eyes are on the Lord. Our eyes are prepared for Him. We know the hour is soon. But you might be saying, well, but pastor, I wanted to achieve a lot more. Let me tell you what happens in the millennium. So after the seven years of tribulation, Jesus returns and he'll return back with his saints. And I want to be in that number returning back. And then it will start off the millennium. So according to the word of God, it says in Revelation 20 verse 4, And I saw thrones and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Christ and for the word of God, and had not worshipped the beast or his image. So they are all those that went through the tribulation. They are the tribulation saints, and had not received the mark on their foreheads or on their hands. You cannot receive the mark. How many people are receiving the jab, knowing that it's the beast system? It's not the mark of the beast yet, but it's the beast system that is preparing many to receive the mark of the beast. So, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years, but the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has heart in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and they shall reign with him for a thousand years. Precious saints, let us go a little bit further into the millennium. The millennium will be Christ's thousand year reign as king. Following the tribulation, David will be vice president and will sit on the throne with him and they will rule the world in righteousness and godliness and they will receive rule and reign with Christ upon the earth. Precious saints, you might be saying, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do during that power? You will be rewarded. You will be rewarded due to your faithfulness now. Your faithfulness now will determine the reward that you will receive during that time of millennium, precious saints. And you will also rule. So maybe you come from, say, Kenya. You will be given a position to to, to rule in a certain area of Kenya. Or maybe you're from Australia and you'll be given that rule over certain parts of Australia for his kingdom's sake. Or maybe you could even rule in certain parts of Jerusalem. Who knows? In Israel, wherever it is, God will reward you according to your faithfulness now. So it's not as though it all ends, but you will go on to minister according to the level that he will give to you, according to your faithfulness here on this earth. It'll be a time where the lion and the lamb will be at peace with each other. That means that the lion and the lamb will be able to sleep next to each other and the lion will not go and eat that lamb. It will be a time that there will be peace between man and animal. There will be a time of peace for that period of time until the end where Satan is released again and tries to deceive a percentage of the people before Jesus comes and deals with sin once and for all at the end of the millennium. But imagine this, according to the Word of God, it says that uh, Psalm 90 verse 10, it says the days of our life are 70 years or even if because of strength, 80 years. So the Bible is giving us a timeline 
He's giving us the years of one's life. So if I was to calculate based on 70 years, we would see within the millennium, that's the millennium, a thousand years divided by 70, that's 14.3 lifetimes. You're going to have 14.3 lifetimes to serve the Lord and to get it right. So focus on being with the Lord. Or if we were to look at 80 years, which I see as a closer fit, we would see 12.5 lifetimes. You will spend 12.5 lifetimes serving the Lord and ruling and reigning based on your faithfulness here to determine that level of rule and reign that He will give to you, precious saints. It is time to serve the Lord. Maybe, so don't allow things to stop you or hinder you or say, oh, well, I don't think that I'm going to be able to uh, fulfill those things. Don't, just keep your eyes on the Lord. Don't allow the things or the achievements of this world or the, or the lost dreams or the lost goals or any of those things to stop you to keep your eyes on anything on this world. Because if you desire the things of this earth more than being with the Lord, let me let me tell you, you may find yourself left behind. You want to go through the tribulation that much, you may find yourself going through the tribulation. This is not a time to argue. This is not a time to get into arguments with people, but rather prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, precious saints. So, what must we do to enter? The Bible tells us, according to Matthew 18, verse 3, And Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as a little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is, the greatest will be in the kingdom of heaven. Let me look at the amplified version. It says, And Jesus said, Assuredly, you most solemnly say to you, unless you repent, that is, change your inner life, your old ways of thinking, and live humble and forgiving, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven, precious saints. You know what it is to be a little child, a little child does not worry about the cares of this world. It's interesting that the children that are under the years of consent, they will be raptured in the rapture. They will be taken away, precious saints. They will be taken. And the Bible is telling us we must also be like little children. Isn't it interesting? The children don't have all the cares and the worries that we do. There are some poor little children that go through such traumatic abuse. And, and it is terrible about what children, some children go through. But little children tend to not be stressed or worried about the things that are happening in the world like an adult does. And the Lord is saying we must be like little children. We must trust in the Lord. We must know that His plan is good for us and that He wants to take us in His time. It is for His purpose and for His plan, precious saints. You know, it's interesting. You know, there are so many rapture dreams. There are so many people receiving rapture dreams in this hour. You know, they are not the big men of God. They are not those that are on the television. They are not on those on the supernatural television stations. No, they are just simple people receiving warnings to, to, to warn us, to let us know, to prepare us that He's coming to snatch us away. Is it interesting that He will speak through the mouths of babies? He will speak through the little children spiritually, not just children physically, but also those that will humble themselves and prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to be a super spiritual person with a big ministry to be taken in the rapture because many of those people, they will say to the Lord, but Lord, Lord, I did this in your name. I prophesied in your name. I did deliverance in your name. I did healing in your name. I preached in your name. And he will say to them, I never knew you. Precious saints, we must be like little children in this hour. Whatever those weights are that are holding us back, whatever the worries are, whatever the cares are, 
Utilize this time to prepare your household. Utilize this time to share with your loved ones if you have not already. See, I've spent so many years doing this. I've shared with all my family. And all I'm doing now is just warning the people that will listen, precious saints. To be honest with you, I have no cares. I felt I've done everything that I need to achieve because I've fulfilled the mandate that God has put upon my life. This is more than uh, having church buildings or ministries or big ministries or writing books or, or any of those things or being popular. It has nothing to do with that. All it has to do is preparing people for righteousness to enter the kingdom of God. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, according to Daniel 12 verse 3, it says, those who are spiritually wise will shine brightly like the brightness of the expense of expanse of heaven and those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever and ever precious saints there is only one desire that i have in this hour and that is that you prepare for the very imminent the for the very coming of the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ. Maybe you've heard my messages before on deliverance, on healing, prophetic words. All those things were great. And there is a season for all things. But in this very hour, in this very moment, precious saints, the warnings are there. And one day I will not be here. And I pray that you will not be left behind because otherwise you will be reminded of every warning of every message I ever gave out of love for you, that you would not be left behind. But precious saints, you must keep your eyes on Jesus Christ in this hour. The B system is already here. The Antichrist is already here. He has already set the stage. The culture is already being set. The lies have already been spread. Remember, he is the devil that is the prince of this air and he is using the airwaves. He is using media. He is using everything to brainwash people, to have a mind control over their minds. But I'm utilizing the, the airwaves. I'm utilizing social media to warn you because many Christian leaders today, they are all in. They are all in coheats with the enemy's plan to bring about the mandate of all those things taking place right now, precious saints. But I'm here to tell you, do not go ahead with the agenda. As I said in my last message on the prayer mountain, I said, don't be pressured because that's what the devil does. Remember, he has devices in his hands. He has a slow approach and also a hard approach. And part of that hard approach is pressure. When you are being pressured into something, when you are being pressured by bosses, when you're being pressured by media, when you're being pressured by government, when you're being pressured by family, when you're being pressured by church leaders, when you're being pressured by all sorts of people to do something, let me tell you, there is something not right because that's how the devil works. If something is not right, then you need to get to alone to be with the Lord and say, Lord, I'm not going to go ahead with that. I'm going to wait upon you. I'm going to use wisdom. I'm going to wait upon you. I'm going to hear with my spiritual ears and I know that you're coming back soon. You are coming to rapture your bride that you have prepared. Lord, I don't want to be one of those tribulation saints. I want to receive that number to be taken to escape. Yes, because he will make those escape the tribulation to come. Those that keep their eyes on the Lord. If you want to stay behind, that's your prerogative. I'm not here to convince you, but rather warn you of what's to happen. Because when that day happens, you will remember every word that Pastor Robert said to you let me tell you and you might think well oh would pastor Rob be able to handle going through the tribulation let me tell you i was a full contact fighter in the ring i know how to fight i know how to defend myself but i don't want to be part of that while well, the world is preparing to fight while the world is preparing for war to try to take back their countries i'm preparing 
for the wedding feast of the Lamb of God in peace, in forgiving all, in loving my Savior. Because that's how we deal with it. That's how we deal with it. We are about to be raptured, precious saints, and it's time for you to be ready. What is holding you back? What is holding you back from going to be with the Lord? It is time to serve the Lord. It's time to take heed of all the warnings that are there, precious saints, because very soon, very, very soon, I'm not going to be here to warn you. And I will be one of those ones in the cloud because that's my whole desire. Ever since the Lord called me to go into ministry, is going, go and warn the people, go and warn the people. Do you know, I've been to cities, I've been to homes. I've been to very humble places and each one of those places we held account for the message that I came. It was never a popular message. It wasn't getting great invitations from, you know, big ministries. And if I did, I took that opportunity to preach the truth. I may never have been invited back again, but I always took that opportunity. And I've even asked for God forgiveness for any message that I've ever done in my own flesh that I thought what God was doing, but really it was just in my heart. I said, God, I repent of any message that was not preparing your people for your imminent return. And I want you precious saints to be also one of those that we get to meet in the clouds of the air. He is coming back soon. He is coming back soon. He is coming back soon. Let me tell you, when the contractions happen, there's nothing can stop it. It's, that it's not about, well, it's not convenient for you. or well, you, you want to do these things. No, when that baby's coming, it's going to come, precious saints. You just need to be ready. You need to, need to be ready within this hour. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person that is listening to this message, that they may prepare that they may prepare their families. You may warn your children. You may prepare your children. The devil is trying to do everything that your children will not enter into the rapture. I'm even going to leave a manual, a letter and a manual for all those. And I'll pin it up on my Facebook, on both pages and wherever I can, of what will be needed for those that are left behind, precious saints. Oh Lord, I pray for each person today, for those, anything that's holding you back. Maybe you've heard this message and you want to get right with the Lord. I don't know about you, but if you get a chance, listen to the animated day of judgment. Some people say, well, that 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 type of God is, is not a God of love. Let me tell you, God is holy. He is, the angels sing, holy, holy, holy. Holy, I want to be one of those that will sing with the angels. Holy, holy, holy. He is a God of love, but we fear Him until we go to be with Him in perfect love, precious saints. It's time for you to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. If that is you here today and you want to get right before the Lord, I want you to repeat this prayer and say it with all of your heart right now. Repeat after me, Heavenly Father, I come before you this day. Lord, I ask for your forgiveness for every sin, whether known or unknown. Lord, forgive me and wash me with the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Today, Father, I receive your Son, Jesus Christ as my Lord, as my God, and as my personal Savior. And from today, I am born again. It is a new beginning. The old things have passed away. Father, send your Holy Spirit to lead me, to guide me, and prepare me for the catching away of the bride. Let nothing weigh me down. No cares, no worries of this world, but let me be a child of God, a child that is trusting in their Father. Lord, we thank you and we give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person right now. Lord, I pray there are many people that are worried, they're concerned for their loved ones, and you're giving them this remaining time to warn them all, to prepare them. Yes, they may look foolish to this world, 
But the Bible says if you're ashamed of him, he will be ashamed of you before his father in heaven. So it's not a time to be ashamed of the Lord, but it's a time to warn and then wait upon the Lord. Have your faith in Jesus Christ, no matter what happens within this world. Heavenly Father, be with those people. Touch them. Lord, deliver those that still need deliverance. Heal those that still need healing. Lord, provide for those that still need providing. But Lord, I pray that you would take all the care and worry of those things away. What's more important is that your heart is free from any offense, anything that would hold you back. Don't allow anything that the devil would do to steal your crown within this hour, precious saints. Lord, come and touch those people. Come and fill them with your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Lord, get their eyes on you and not on the things of this world. But Lord, I pray that you will bless them, lead them, guide them in this hour. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen and amen. This is Pastor Robert Clancy from Narrapath Ministries in Perth, Western Australia. It is time to catch the fire of repentance revival as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Now, if you've heard this message, I will upload it to YouTube after the week. So you can subscribe there, but you can also follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Share it with someone today, precious saints. You can also go to our free website, repentancerevival.com. Don't forget, for those that join the three-day fast, God bless you. God is preparing you every single day. And don't forget the 10-day fasting, the Feast of Trumpets on the 7th of September. It's only less than 14 days away, precious saints, 14 days away, 14 days away, the 7th all the way to the 16th. 10 days of us preparing. Prepare your family. Remove yourself from hell vision. And only watch wholesome things. Only do wholesome things. Only talk wholesome things. Remove yourself from anything that is not right in this hour. These are the last preparations. This is the last preparations, precious saints. Please get ready. I'm pleading with you because when that day happens, you will remember Pastor Robert Clancy. Let me tell you, and you do not want to be left behind, but we want to meet on the clouds with the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to meeting all my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that they, the Lord will say to us, you good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. I'm looking for them. Remember, those that come in last will receive the same reward. So don't worry if you've just come in. Know that the millennium will be there. You'll still be able to serve the Lord and God will reward us for our faithfulness here on the earth. Utilize your time wise within this hour. So from my family to yours, God bless you. We love you. We are praying for you, precious saints. Shalom, shalom, shalom.